Man, I almost wanted to leave the show with this, but I didn't. Houston, 44, SMU, 37. And this, I think this might have been the second best ball game of the day. Did you did you sit and watch this last night? Yeah, SMU, Houston. I said, I told everybody, we talked about this game. This is going to be the best game Saturday night, and it was. It absolutely was. I had it on along with uh, Ohio State, Penn State, Ole Miss, Auburn, etc. This is the one that really, really stole the show. Uh, I mean, it, it doesn't get... I wish that this was a weeknight game so that more people would have been able to see it. That's what I really wish. Uh, I think it was Clayton Toon's best game. He was 27 out of 37. That's Houston's quarterback, by the way. 27 out of 37, 412 yards, four touchdowns, no picks. Uh, Houston, it just... It, they they should have won this game by way more than they did. Their win per, or post game win expectancy in this game ninety two percent. They they won on a kickoff return with seventeen seconds left in the ball game. SMU had driven the field and had kicked a forty six yard field goal to tie it. And Houston won yardage four eighty nine to three fifty five. And to hold SMU's offense to only three hundred fifty five yards is a spectacle. That's a feat right there. They won yards per play, 6.4 to 5.8. They won third downs, 56% to 43%. They won drive points, 27 to 14. And they won rushing, check this out, 77 yards to 50 yards. There were, we didn't have to rush in this game. <laughs> from, from how Houston started the season till now, they're the most improved team in the AAC. Yes. Did, because they started, the- they started the season off in a weird, weird game against Texas Tech where they were just on fire for the first quarter and then didn't score again the rest of the game. Yep, struggled early a couple of games after that. And, man, Dana Holgerson has found something that works. And and they they are back to the Houston, we're dropping 40 on you. And if you can't score 40, you ain't winning. Now, you have got that right. The offense was not good early in the season, like you said. And Uniform game last night. Unbelievable, oh, by yes. the way. Love the black oh. and red from them. Love the chrome helmets with the red little, little, little hue to, to it. Love that. The SMU jerseys. That's a Dallas across them, and I like that. I liked it. I like the SMU helmets. I, I like the two tone logo. That was an all uniform game last night. It was really good, man. It it yep. looked it was pleasant on the eyes. It was yeah. it was an awesome I, I, game. Uh, I liked everything about it. SMU got a a touchdown return, uh, kick return touchdown early in the game, and it it only made karmic sense for Houston to be able to win that game with a kick return touchdown at the end. It, it was it was an awesome game. You you look at some of these numbers. This this Houston defense is serious, man. They are they are top ten in I think they might be top five in efficiency uh, right now. But they are uh, the defense has led the way for them this entire season, and now the offense is starting to click. They are they are awesome. The fact that Houston had you know they they had two fumbles. They recovered one of them themselves, but they are the team that actually gave up points off of a turnover. They gave up six points off of a turnover, and SMU had a turnover, but Houston didn't capitalize on it. And Houston was still able to get the win. This is the team that can give Cincinnati fits. Like, it's going to be a problem in the AAC championship game. They don't play in the regular season this year, and I'm kind of glad that it falls that way. I don't want to see a rematch in the AAC championship. This is almost exactly what Cincinnati needed to have had. We're not going to talk Cincy today, uh, but they, I mean, they kind of struggled with Tulane, but I think they're bored. That just they, they didn't struggle with Tulane, Gary. They beat them by 25. They struggled yeah. in the first half. It looked weird in the first half. And then they and they rolled off like 20-something unanswered yeah. points. And, and Tulane didn't cross the 50 the entire second half. Yeah, it was 31 to 12. It, it was it, it, by struggle. I mean, they didn't demolish them the way that they should have. How's that? Yeah. So okay. it, they they didn't beat them. I'm sorry they didn't beat them by 30. It, it, yeah. I mean, like, they, they were they were twenty eight point or twenty six and a half or whatever it, it was. A, it was a really yeah. close first quarter. It was a weird second quarter, third and fourth quarter. Ball game was over. Yeah, it was it was definitely over. But uh, but yeah, I mean, this is two weeks in a row where they've just kind of slept walk through it, right? So, but Houston well, is the if team. If you sleepwalk through beating somebody by over twenty, I I'll take that. I don't yeah. I don't know I don't know what what you're supposed to do. No, I, I I get where you're coming from. I get it. But there are. It, there are factions that believe that they should be killing everybody by you know twenty eight and whatnot uh, to be able to get into the playoffs. Wrong. I, I'm hey, 
Your those acquired. are the same people that think it's all of these teams' birthright. These guys bringing up, oh, he's an LSU fan. He should understand. They know it's nobody's birthright to win ten games a year. It's nobody's God given birthright to be seven and one every year. When you're seven and one, be happy that your team's playing well because there's going to be dark days coming, and you're not going to be seven and one. Jesus Christ! True, true, very true. All right, so Houston, of course, massive win there. Uh, Dana Holgerson has got this thing rolling, and it looks like his plan of redshirting and building up his roster to set up for a strong third year uh, has worked brilliantly. Brilliant. Uh, how many of these guys are they losing next year? Are they bringing most of this team back? Because that's the team you got to look for next year. Because will, will they be in the Big 12 next year? Are they starting uh, at one early? Or is I, think, I think it's 2023. I think it's 2023, okay. but they are... Uh, they're, I think they're going to lose some of these guys. They are going to return a lot. But, yeah, I mean, they it's it's a typical I team. I still think Cincinnati yeah. needs to be careful with SMU in a couple of weeks. That's oh, they still do. going to be an awesome game. They absolutely do. They absolutely do. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at Chris B. Giannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.